gentleman from Texas is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself that uh, time that I might cons consume. The gentleman is recognized for as much time as he may consume. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in opposition to this bill, not so much in any objection to what the goals are. The goals are uh, very laudable. In the first, the first time I read this resolution, I was in agreement with everything until the very end. And then I had some disagreements with it. I've taken this time so I would have adequate uh, time to explain my position and why I oppose this bill. Obviously, this country is facing a serious problem with drugs. As a physician, I can attest to it. We have major problems in this country. Something should be done. But I thought it was necessary to take some time to point out that what we have done for 20 to 25 years hasn't been all that good. And I see this resolution as an endorsement of the status quo, not an introduction of one single new idea about how to approach uh, this problem. And it's for this reason that I have taken this time to try to get people to think about maybe an alternative someday that we might look at, because so far, the spending of the money and the abuse of our civil liberties that has occurred with the war on drugs hasn't accomplished a whole lot. I object strongly to the federal approach to law enforcement. That's one of the major issues I have uh, a contention with. When you think about uh, when we tried to make a better world in 1919, uh, and we thought we should uh, prohibit certain substances being used in this country, in those days we had enough respect for the Constitution that we actually believed then <clears throat> that we should amend the Constitution, and we did, and we had an experiment, and after 14 years, of, uh, of a failed program, uh, we repealed that amendment on, on alcohol. In 1937, it was decided that possibly we should restrict marijuana even for medical uses. And even then, it was not assumed that this was a federal prerogative. It was not banned, it was not outlawed. It was still assumed that it was the responsibility of the states to deal with problems of drugs and marijuana and law enforcement. In 1937, and I'm sure some of my conservative colleagues might be interested in this because it was the great FDR who decided to uh, impose a great tax on marijuana, putting a $100 tax on a pound of marijuana, essentially making it illegal. And even today, those states which would, who, would, who would like to legalize marijuana even for the sick and dying AIDS patients and the cancer patients aren't even permitted to. It is because we have carelessly assumed that all regulation and all controls and all policing activities should be done here in Washington. And I'm here just to suggest quite possibly our attack on drugs hasn't been correct, that we have been possibly making some mistakes. Maybe we've spent some money that we haven't, uh, haven't gotten our, our dollars worth. Maybe we're going in the wrong direction. It's estimated that we have spent over $200 billion in the last 25 years fighting drugs. And yet, it's the same old thing again. Play on the emotions of the people, condemn drug usage, which I do. And as I said, as a physician, I know they're horrible. But as a politician and somebody in the legislature, legislature we should think about the efficiency and the effectiveness of our laws. And the evidence, quite frankly, isn't there to show that we're doing a very good job. And even though I commend the individuals who are promoting this legislation, the motivations are there, the desires are there, but I think, in my view, that it's the same old program of the federal war on drugs that has a lot of shortcomings. In the, in the first whereas of this resolution, I, I strongly agree with. It says, whereas recently revealed statistics demonstrate America is not winning the battle to keep young Americans drug free. This is my point. This is conceded by everyone. We're not winning this fight, so why pursue the same policies over and over again, especially since there are some shortcomings with the policies. Not only have they not been effective, there are some serious shortcomings, shortcomings on civil liberties and property rights and other things. We ought to put the war on drugs in a proper perspective. Yes, it's easy to talk about a heroin addict 
and a crime committed and people narrowing in on one instance. But we ought to look at this in a proper manner. There's talk that there's 20,000 deaths, you know, with the drug, uh, with illegal drugs. But that, in the best of my estimates, include all the violent drugs, which to me are a consequence of the war on drugs. I have statistics that said there's about 6,000 people who die from overdosing and taking illegal drugs. A horrible figure. It's horrible. And, and nobody should be using these drugs. But let's put this in another different perspective. We lose 37,000 people on highways every year, government-managed highways. 36,000 people die each year from guns. But we do not take the guns away from the innocent people because there are gun accidents and gun deaths. 36,000 in comparison to six. There's one other figure that is astounding that was in the media, reported in the media here the last couple days. And the medical profession has a responsibility here. It is estimated that we're losing 106,000 people a year. And these are reports from 1994. 106,000 people a year from drug reactions, legal prescription drugs coming from doctors. Now, if you want to go after a problem, let's go after the highways, let's go after the guns, let's go after the drug reaction. What about alcohol? 200,000 deaths approximately from alcohol. But do we come here and propose that, that we go back to prohibition? No, we don't. It's a serious problem. It is the, really the big problem. Cigarettes killing maybe up to 400,000 a year. But if you make the suggestion that you ought to go after them, then we have a president that says, yes, we'll go after the kids that are taking a puff on a cigarette and apply the same rules. There are 10 million new cases of sexually transmitted diseases diagnosed each year. And it's probably higher because most of those cases don't get reported. So that is a serious problem. I mean, look for serious problem, but to dwell on the drug war and casually and carelessly violate civil liberties as we so often do, and have confiscation and seizure of property, which we just blow it off because we're fighting the drug war, I think we're going in the wrong direction. We need some new ideas and new proposals on this drug war. And I hope today I have time to make some of these suggestions on what we might do about the drug war. Former HEW Secretary Joseph Califano said not too long ago, he says, and he was comparing, comparing the drug war to the problem of alcohol. He says, it's, it's uh, the drug war, it's a grain of sand compared to alcohol. If you look at the college issue, the overwhelming drug that is a problem on college campuses is alcohol. And yet, 99% of our concerns and our expression of horror is directed toward a narrower group of people, that is, on the illegal, uh, illegal drugs. Why might it be that we dwell on the illegal drugs? Alcohol, of course, is legal. But why would it be that maybe uh, this Congress might not be as aggressive against the abuses of alcohol and the deaths? If we have compassion, should we show less compassion to the 200,000 people dying of alcohol deaths? Or the 400,000 dying from cigarette deaths? But we do. But it just happens that those who produce alcohol happen to come to Washington quite frequently and then make donations to candidates. And they have a lobby. And they do, uh, they, uh, they do have a presence here in Washington. Not only those who make the alcohol, but what about the hotels and the restaurants? I mean, if we even thought about doing anything or saying anything about alcohol, of course, uh, we would hear from the hotels and the restaurants, and maybe rightfully so, if we argue that uh, people have a right to have a glass of wine uh, with their dinner in a hotel or restaurant. But the point I'm trying to make is that we dwell on certain things out of proportion to its danger. Also, one reason why we might not talk about the tremendous abuse with alcohol is the fact that quite possibly a few members of Congress actually participate and uh, in using such a thing. 
There are now probably 13 million people in the United States suffering from abuse or alcoholism, a serious, uh, serious number. Now, there's a lot more that uh, has to be said, especially if we can someday open up the debate and go in a new direction, have some new ideas dealing with the drug program. But I want to pause here for a minute, but I want to emphasize just uh, one thing. That is that constitutionally, it was never intended that the federal government fight the war on drug, and they never did until recent years. And for 25 years now, we have done it. We have spent $200 billion. It's failing, and we're not willing to stand up and say, hey, maybe we're doing something wrong. Maybe we ought to have another idea. Maybe we ought to have a new approach. And I think when we talk about not only looking at this out of perspective of other problems that we have in the country, but also the serious consequences of the drug laws, which we all should be concerned about because it involves property rights and civil liberty rights, then maybe we can get around to the point of saying, could there be a new approach? And I reserve now the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves the balance of his time. The gentleman from California, seek recognition. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I yield myself one minute. The gentleman yields himself one minute. Is recognized. Uh, I want to commend the other side and Representative Pappas for bringing this resolution, which, of which I am a co-sponsor, to the floor today. Uh, I just want to take a second to say that all of the whereas's deal with the, much of the problems that the previous speaker outlined. But in the end, uh, the resolve is the resolve that he talks about. Now, because Congress, in a unique way, can bring leadership to uh, an emphasis to the people in the communities to take an extra effort to combat this horrible disease that exists in our communities today, drugs. Uh, obviously, the extent of drug distribution, sale, or, or use by our nation youth today is extremely troubling. And a joint effort by Republicans, uh, Democrats, and the President, and the American people really, I believe, is needed to uh, uh, fight this pressing issue. Too many of our nation's youth succumb to the perils of drugs, and I wouldn't compare alcohol, which is a legal distribution, to drugs as an illegal distribution as being the same, necessarily the same thing, uh, horses of a different color. Time's expired. Uh, I ask unanimous consent to extend and revise my remarks. Without objections, ordered.